Good morning. Today is June 1st, 2020, and this is the Morning Breach with Scott Davis. The 2020 Shredit Data Protection Report found that nearly half of small business owners have no policy for disposing of confidential information on electronic devices. And 43% of executive level managers have experienced a data breach in the past. I personally would find that number to be higher just based on my experience and seeing the policies that are written. So what should your policies include? First and foremost, work with your hired or contracted IT team. They really should know your data better than anyone else. Second, you need to know your data and what data is accessible from what devices and how it's accessible. Next, you need to build out what your data policy on how, uh, what your data policy is, how you handle confidential data, uh, when it should be accessed, how it can be accessed, and then build your disposal of equipment and recycling policy. You need to consider the following devices when writing these policies, including your workstations, laptops, servers, network storage devices like a SAN or a NAS, USB drives, mobile devices, and yes, even multi-function printer, copy, and scanners. For mobile devices, laptops, workstation devices, uh, or those personal USBs or external storage devices um, that have confidential information, the drive should be removed and securely wiped with a certificate of destruction. Um, that's if that device has ever housed or stored locally on it confidential data personal identifiable information or customer information. You could even include healthcare. If it doesn't, then formatting the drive should be enough or if recycling the drive, simply drilling a hole through the drive should do the trick. So now servers, network storage devices, printer, copier, and scanners should always, always have the drives removed and certified destroyed by a company like Shredit. The data on these devices is extremely likely to at one point contain sensitive data and should be assumed to still have it on it in a recoverable state. Also in the Shredit report, it found auto dealerships tend to think they're somewhat immune as 71% don't think that a data breach is likely to occur within the next five years. Even worse, 57% don't even have cyber insurance policies to protect them if an attack did happen. Nearly 30% fail to train their staff of current cyber threats and more even train their staff just once, typically as part of the hiring process. The National Cybersecurity Alliance has found that in businesses with up to 500 employees that suffered a data breach, 10% went out of business and 25% filed for bankruptcy. Now, every business, even dealerships, needs to be constantly updating their data protection policies to cover the evolving cyber threats. If you're not sure if you're protected, reach out to me right now. Just reach out to me, either private message or on this feed, and that five minutes that we talk could save your business. So. Now let's take a look at some of the reported cyber attacks of the last few days. NetWalker continues its successful exploits, uh, this time from the Australian city of WISE, W-E-I-Z. The ransomware was able to get deployed on the network via phishing emails. I constantly tell you about phishing emails. Uh, Amtrak uh, has revealed that it had discovered a data breach roughly on April 16th which had a third party gain access to some Amtrak guest reward accounts. It appears the breach was caused by abused, compromised usernames and passwords, which allowed the hacker to authenticate themselves on those guest reward accounts. Potentially affected accounts had their passwords automatically reset by Amtrak. So what that really breaks out to is with all of the attacks that are happening, there is a massive directory of usernames and passwords. Um, and if a hacker um, 
you know, as they're putting together the puzzle of who you are, who their victims are, they see Amtrak piece here and they see username password here and the email address matches the username, you know, ultimately that's successful for them. So it's one of the reasons whenever we talk about passwords, we recommend using different passwords for every site that you use. I know it can be mind boggling to say, oh my God, I have 50 websites. Do you want me to remember 50 passwords? No, but use a password manager, obviously the safest route, um, or make small changes into each password. Um, yes, it's guessable. Yes, it's something, but it's not as easy as copy paste, copy paste. Um, so use a password manager if you can, if that's possible, it is possible. Um, if not, you know, obviously try to use different passwords or even group passwords. So have a password that's just social media site, you know, your LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, then have one password that's just work, then have one password that's your banking, your financials, and then have a password that's everything else. Uh, that way, if there is a breach of one password, you're only changing that subset. And if it's everything else, really the data that's in everything else is your name, address, um, and maybe a credit card. Um, so not a whole lot of, you know, PII when it comes to healthcare, banking, etc. cetera. Uh, Joomla is an open source content management system like WordPress. Well, they announced that a data breach occurred when the resources directory team left a full backup of the resources.joomla.org website on their Amazon Web Services bucket unencrypted. So the backup contained details of roughly 2,700 users, including the full name, the business name, business addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, um, the company website, even the nature of business, uh, and also encrypted passwords and IP addresses. Uh, I mean, that's the big thing right there, uh, but it also had newsletter subscription preferences, uh, so how often you get email. But to wrap up today's episode, today's a great day as it's the first day of the month and it's also the first Monday to start documenting where your data lives and what your policy is on data and the disposal of those end of life devices. So if you need help, please, please, please comment or send me a private message today. As always, if you've learned something new by watching this, please take a few seconds and like and share the video. If you want to see more episodes, which I know you do, of The Morning Breach, please follow, connect, or subscribe. And again, thank you for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow morning.